something more about a theorem which was already mentioned last time and which hatched over the winter break. It is a theorem in combinatorics. We have finite manifolds, manifold G, and we have a finite set 1 to n and we have a map from G, from the vertex set of G to this finite set. We are interested in when the and the inverse produces us a uh, manifold. What we want to do in order to get the manifold of co-dimension k, we want to induce, we want to produce a k-dimensional topology on that target point. And the way I, how I think about this is, this is, this is a point, right? This is a point, it's a rich point, more rich than just a, a complete graph. It is equipped with a partition and the partition tells us also what the dimension is. This is an example of a partition of the number four. And the number four is for me always this crimson color. And uh, there are different ways to partition this. So we can write four as two plus one plus one. So this is my Cuisinaire picture. Uh, four is equal to two plus one plus one. And uh, this produces a three part graph complete graph 112, which is uh, this kite graph. So this decomposition of the number four produces this kite graph. <clears throat> I worked with Cuisinaire since first grade. I got introduced to mathematics using Cuisinaire sticks in first grade. Mr. Ilk, my first grade teacher, just on his own initiative, gave us this uh, Cuisinaire sticks. And I still have these Cuisinaire sticks from first grade. And I use them also in high school. For example, a theorem I discovered in high school. I think it's a new theorem. And I uh, was very proud about all these theorems I produced. Cuisinaire was uh, developing this in the in the 50s. This is the book I just got from the library, Numbers in Color. And uh, there are other approaches. Maybe I will talk about this another time. There is a, another approach by Catherine Stern, who did something similar around the same time. You can produce results. For example, I was interested in the area of all these partitions. So there are 11 partitions of the number six. And so the, the, the area is 66. You can write this as a sum of partitions of smaller n. So this is a recursive formula, which I found in high school. So every partition of one to n produces a simplicial complex. I have shown here all the possible, 11 possible simplicial complexes, which you can produce using partitions on the set from one to six. And uh, so they are zero dimensional, they are one dimensional. This is the octahedron is an example of a two dimensional complex. So it's K222. It's the join of the two point graph with the two point graph with the two point graph. So it's a join of spheres. So the spheres produce a sub monoid of all the graphs and similarly these partitions form a submonoid using the join operation. It also forms a ring, uh, the multiplicative structure, the subodici multiplication, large multiplication is in the case of partitions also there. So you can produce a semi-ring then complete it to a ring. So that would complete to the integers, that would complete to a larger ring and that would also complete then to the 
the Sabidusi or Zikov Sabidusi rain, which is dual to the Sharon rain, which I talked a lot about. That you can now look at such a map and I told already last time I was battling with the question for which simplicial complexes do we really have the property that we get here a subgraph, which is a manifold. What, what emerged just from hundreds of experiments, what emerged is that we have to look at the partition complexes, which are kind of multipartite graphs. The proof uh, I already sketched last time, I will actually, I hope, just post uh, a preprint uh, at the end of this weekend. The proof is essentially the same than the morse sar proof I've already looked at. We look at the hyperbolic structure of simplicial complexes. Every unit sphere has to be a sphere. That's the definition of a manifold. And then the sphere is the join of a stable sphere and unstable sphere. The stable sphere being everything contained in the simplex and the unstable sphere, everything which contains this. So there's a hyperbolic structure. And uh, then we can reduce things uh, by induction. We can reduce this to smaller dimension and then uh, the key thing is the induction assumption, which then really points to this uh, to this partition partition uh, complexes or com partition graphs. So it's very nice, and maybe I show some pictures of manifolds I made. You can with five lines of code, you can produce arbitrary dimensional, arbitrary complex manifolds. So the only data you need is a hosts uh, simply see a complex which can be relatively small usually kind of 20 30 nodes is enough and then uh, uh, you need a you need a, a, a partition and a map you take a map and you take a random map and uh, this produces then manifolds so there are many 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 different maps right for example i mean one special case is when you take the complete graph. We have a, uh, we just need that the function is onto. And then the the function is onto, we get the D minus K manifold. So a map from a discrete manifold to a complete graph of dimension K produces a D minus K manifold, always, if it is onto. So this was the case which I started with in 2015. This was the discrete SAR theorem from 2015, where we had just a function of one variable, a real valued function of one variable. And then I looked at the C value, which is not attained by the vertices, and then the function values are either positive or negative. So you have two cases, plus one or minus one. And this interface, it's an open set at first in the Alexandrov topology, but you make it a com simplicity complex, and this simplicity complex is always a hyper surface. That's the result from 2015. What I uh, managed to see, I mentioned this was 2023, November. Uh, I looked again at this uh, case of functions where now we have a function, maybe a complex valued function, and then we have four different cases. That's actually just this case. I was actually looking at this case and I assumed that two values, for example, I assumed that one, one, and minus one, minus one is attained. And I, I wanted just a, a third one there. <coughs> so uh, I forced, I wanted to have in the image two of the values and at least one third, and that produced me manifolds. That's actually just this partition complex K112. Now, uh, you can do that in higher dimensions. Three dimensions is also interesting because, for example, you can then you have eight different values, and that's uh, kind of you know the case you are looking at in uh, the unit quaternion group, the, the finite group of order eight, which is uh, you can take a function, an arbitrary function from the manifold to the quaternion group. And as long as the image is not abelian, then uh, you have a, then you have always a, a, a D minus three manifold. If it's a two dimensional, then you have a D minus two manifold. Then you are in this case here. This is the complex case. Another interesting thing, maybe I show some, some pictures of uh, uh, these manifolds, which were generated by, you know, I think I took a Bohr manifold and then uh, a two-dimensional partition complex, or I took a five-manifold and a 
a three-dimensional partition complex and then looked at these uh, manifolds, their surfaces. Surfaces are not very interesting, kind of because they are completely classified. What you see is also this uh, partition of the manifold into, into subsets. For example, in this case, what happens is the manifold will be partitioned into two parts. If I look at this triangle, so this triangle will produce me part of the will cover part of the manifold. This triangle here will produce me a, a, so you can color this and the intersection, the interface between these two you know patches. This is a one manifold in this case and the one manifold is actually what you obtain if you take the complete foreground. It's very nice that you can with very, very little code. I will also post the code. There are five lines or less which allow you to produce arbitrary complex manifold. And the interesting thing is that it's always a manifold, as long as kind of some non-degeneracy condition is satisfied. And this is kind of natural. The non-degeneracy condition just means that you really reach the k-dimensions of the you don't want to, for example, to reach only two points here. That would be a one-dimensional image, and then you would get a hypersurface of condimension one. So you want to have a two at least one of the triangles have to be reached in this case. And in k-dimension, you want to have one of the k-dimensional facets has to be reached. This is the analog of this uh, condition which you have a maximal rank condition, which you have if you have a manifold M and a manifold N, and you take a map, a differential map from F from M to N, and you assume that the Jacobian matrix has maximal rank at every point. Then you get a, a regular, you have a regular point, meaning that the Jacobian matrix has maximal rank, then you have a, a submanifold. So this is completely analog to what happens in the continuum, but we have no differentiability or no, no, no tool, no linear algebra. So we have to work with different tools. And it turns out that it's more rich than in the continuum, right? We have here kind of different possibilities to produce k-dimensional points. It's not only a k-dimensional simplex, right? We have different, depending on n, we can take n to be a thousand and we can produce a two-dimensional complex on this thing. We have a map which has takes thousand values and we still can produce like this hypersurfaces of codimension two if we have a complex partition of dimension two. So that's it for today.